heresy. He's forced to give up all his Copernican ideas, which apparently he did nearly in front of the tribunal. Despite his concession, Galileo quietly held fast to his beliefs throughout his final years under house arrest at his villa outside Florence. Galileo is the first modern scientist in the sense that he actively engaged in observations with the telescope, he actively proposed theories consistent with the telescope, and he dared, he dared to challenge the orthodoxy of the moment. Shortly before his death in 1642, Galileo inadvertently stumbled over a clue to Kepler's puzzle about the sun's strange influence on planetary motion. It was a clue that would help point future generations toward a theory of the Big Bang. Galileo's last published work dealt with the properties of falling bodies, which he noted always accelerated at the same rate, no matter what their mass. But it would take another genius to connect these two puzzle pieces together in a theory of gravity. Isaac Newton, born in 1643, explained the mechanism by which the planets moved. And not just how planets moved, but how everything moved, from planets to apples. Newton was a towering intellect. It is astonishing what he did. His moment in the history of science is a sharp break in which the power of mathematics is really brought to bear on aspects of the physical universe. He is what set us down this path of using mathematics to describe the universe, showing that math, for some reason, is the language of the cosmos. Kepler observed through his data the attractive effects of the sun. It acted like a giant magnet. Might the planets also be like magnets? Galileo had theorized about the rate of acceleration of falling bodies, and he realized that regardless of their mass, falling objects always fall at the same rate. But years later, Newton had something to add to Kepler and Galileo. The great insight Newton had was to bring Galileo and Kepler together and to realize that the things that make projectiles move and fall on Earth is the same thing that makes the planets go around the sun in the skies. In a sense, the planets are falling toward the sun. Just as Galileo's falling bodies fell towards the Earth. The crux of it all is gravity, the strange action at a distance that holds everything together. Newton didn't just observe gravity, he drew it up as a provable equation, showing that gravity was the energy, the tether, that kept matter, objects like the Earth and the planets, from flying headlong into interstellar space. Gravity, the attractive force that affects all matter in the universe, gives the universe order, and gravity is described by the science of physics. Newton created physics. He was the person who first saw the fundamental laws. Underneath all of these observations, Newton's laws explained almost everything. Newton postulated the laws of motion, the universal rules of gravity. He begins a new era in science, using observations and mathematics to describe the laws of nature. He could, in fact, show that the rate at which an apple was falling to the Earth was directly related to the way the moon was falling around the Earth. Because he understood that the same laws that led to the motion of the planets around the sun 
led to the motion of the moon around the Earth. Newton's great book, the Principia, revealed that the tides, the velocity of orbiting planets, even the shape of the Earth could be explained through the pull of gravity because everything with mass exerts a pulling force on everything else with mass. The moon pulls the oceans. The earth pulls the moon. The sun pulls the earth. And the closer these objects are to each other, the stronger gravity pulls. Newton's Principia is such an engulfing work of genius that it almost makes up for one disconcerting fact. Although Newton formulated the laws that govern gravity, he never explained or even understood why it works. And gravity, when you think about it, is bizarre. Understanding how the Earth knew where the sun was, to go around it, what happened if the sun suddenly moved, what would the Earth do? This action at a distance is something which he gave up on. He said, I'm just not going to worry about that question because the laws work. Although physicists still struggle to define gravity, Newton had gone far in revealing it. 200 years later, Albert Einstein would rival Newton's genius, not only creating new laws of physics, but reinventing the universe. Albert Einstein, born in Germany in 1879, may be the most famous scientist who ever lived because of what he did here in Bern, Switzerland in 1905. Failing to secure a teaching position after his years as a student, Einstein took a job at this patent office and then he began to think. In fact, he thought up a revolution in space and time. Without Einstein, we might still be struggling to understand how the universe really works. I think if we were asked who was the greatest scientist of the 20th century, most of us would say Einstein. And I think it's partly because of the fact that there's a natural fascination with uh, space and time, the mysteries thereof. But also I think it is partly because he fitted the uh, archetype public perception of a scientist. Einstein didn't mean to lead us to the origin of the universe. He didn't even like thinking about it. The idea of a beginning suggested a dynamic, finite universe. And Einstein preferred a static, infinite one. Philosophically, he believed that the universe was eternal and that a universe that had to have a beginning or an ending was unesthetic, it was not pretty. The idea that the universe was infinite and eternal was an old one, embraced by scientists like Einstein because it was easier to think of the universe as always existing, rather than as having been created. Created how? By what? Unfortunately for Einstein, his new understanding of forces like gravity would ultimately suggest the universe was not eternal. Einstein's ideas were so bizarre, it's almost easier to think of them as applying to some other crazy carnival world. But strange as it may seem, our world is Einstein's world. Gather round, gather round, don't push, don't shove, make sure you get a good view. The show is about to start, you don't want to miss a thing. Hurry, 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 ladies and gentlemen, step right up to Einstein World, where things are always what they appear to be, but not always what you'd expect. First up, the wondrous Einstein himself. Born missing a region of the brain that influences speech, he did not speak until the age of three. However, his parietal lobe, responsible for mathematical thought and spatial relationships, grew larger making his entire brain 15% wider. Notice the...